The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus summoned the crowd with his disciples and said to them, Whoever wishes to come after me must deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. For whoever wishes to save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake and that of the gospel will save it. What profit is there for one to gain the whole world and forfeit his life? What could one give in exchange for his life? Whoever is ashamed of me and of my words in this faithless and sinful generation, the Son of Man will be ashamed of when he comes in his Father's glory with the holy angels. He also said to them, Amen, I say to you, there are some standing here who will not taste death until they see that the kingdom of God has come in power. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. Our first reading today from the letter of James is talking about faith and what happens when our faith is reduced to sheer pietism without action. Sabi niya, it becomes useless. It is like a body without a spirit. It is dead. Meron palang ganun, no? A faith that is dead, pananampalatayang patay. When faith becomes just a means of escape from the world, when it no longer has any impact or relevance to society and the way we live our lives, then it stops serving its true purpose. The kind of faith that Jesus evoked in His disciples was that which could make of us that little bit of leaven, yeast, that is mixed with a mass of dough, levadura, or a little pinch of salt that enhances the taste of food, or the little spark of light that drives away the darkness. When our faith stops serving that purpose of being leaven or salt of the earth or light of the world, wala na siyang kahulugan. It becomes totally useless. It, it, it becomes like a, a piece of antique in a museum where it has lost its original purpose. St. James, in our reading, is giving Abraham as an example of one whose faith was alive what gives life to faith, as far as he is concerned, is a relationship. Because that is what faith is about. This is a relationship, a friendship, a covenant. It is about responding freely to God's call or invitation. It is about the will to carry out the commandments, which are commandments because we are committed to a covenant relationship with God and with one another. By the way, yun ang dahilan kung bakit madalas kong sabihin na ang sampung kautusan ay mas magandang unawain bilang sampung kasunduan. The Ten Commandments ay mas mabuting tawaging the Ten Commitments. We also heard it today from the Alleluia verse quoted from John 15, 15. Sabi nung verse, I no longer call you slaves because 
a slave does not know what his master is doing. And Jesus says, I call you friends. Kaibigan ang tawag niya sa atin. No wonder the great figures of the Bible, as in the Old Testament, were called friends of God, mga kaibigan ng Diyos. Aside from Abraham, we also have Moses, whom God called his intimate friend, and whose face shone from being exposed to God's glory. Dahil daw sa pakikipagkaibigan ni Moses kay God, after meeting God in prayer, kumikinang daw yung mukha niya. We also hear about the prophet Elijah, whom God decided to take up to heaven with him through a chariot of fire. These are examples of living faith, buhay na pananampalataya, a faith that changed not just them as individuals, but their people's lives and history. A dead faith is a religion that is founded on fear, on fear of punishment and retribution. In contrast, a living faith is a faith that is founded on love. I'm taking that from 1 John chapter 4, verse 8. And in verse 18, St. John says, Perfect love casts out all fear. And so the foundation of faith is love. Faith is not even possible without love. That's why St. Paul calls it the greatest gift. The foundation is that love that is ready and willing to die to self. A love that is willing to give up all for the sake of the beloved. Ready to lay down one's life for one's friend. Kung minsan may nakakausap ako na tipong nagsasabing nawalan na ho ako ng pananampalataya. I have lost my faith. But most of the time, what they really mean is, I have lost what I thought was faith, but which I realized was nothing but a dead religion. A dead religion. The kind of religion that James is speaking about in our first reading. Pwede pa lang kunyari, nagdadasal ako o nagsisimba. Pero patay ang pananampalataya. Oo, nakakatakot yun. The kind of religion that we hear about in the first reading. Well, in cases like this, siguro mas mabuti pang mawalan ng pananampalataya. Maybe losing faith in that kind of sense is good news, not bad news. Sabi ni Jesus sa gospel, it is those who try to save it who end up losing it and those who lose it who end up finding it. You remember St. Peter? Kung kailan niya iniwan yung kanyang bangka at ang kanyang mga lambat in order to follow Jesus that he was able to fulfill his call to become the great fisherman that God wanted him to be. Or remember St. Paul, it was when he was blinded that he began to truly see the light. It was when St. Paul fell to the ground that he truly rose to greatness to become the new person that Christ wanted him to be. A man who found his wealth in his poverty, his strength and power in weakness. It was when Saul, the persecutor, stopped living only for himself and allowed Christ to live in him that he became Paul. He became a new man, the great apostle to the Gentiles. Now is the opportunity 
to do what James in our first reading is inviting us to do to demonstrate our faith by our action and concretely that means to show your faith by the way you will vote this coming election in May of 2022. Don't ever say it's just politics at walang kaugnayan ang pananampalataya. Kung walang kinalaman ang pananampalataya sa ating pagboto, it means our faith is dead. <laughs>